Today we're going to talk about a piece you've written about the filtering down of sophisticated surveillance technology from the military and national security down to your local police department and a story about secrecy and surveillance. Uh, what happened in Tallahassee, Florida? Okay, so in Tallahassee, uh, a police department there used a new surveillance technology to track down a suspect in an armed robbery. They didn't have very much to go on. Um, they had a relatively vague description of the suspect, um, but miraculously they were able to find uh, that suspect um, on very little evidence uh, in the parking lot of a budget inn. And the gadget's called a Stingray. It's called a Stingray. What's a Stingray? So a Stingray is the brand name for a technology that's called a cell site simulator. Um, and what they do is they trick cell phones in their vicinity into treating the device as a cell tower. They're collecting the data that would otherwise be collected by a cell tower um, directly to the police. Okay, so I'm walking down the street. I'm the suspect. I want to send a text message to my co-conspirator. My phone says, hi, I'm a phone, where's the cell tower? And this police box says, I'm a cell tower, here I am. And you, my phone connects to that. That connects to a real cell tower. My text message goes through, but on the way, uh, the police have a record of it. That's right. So what's wrong with that? Well, what's wrong with that is that the way that the technology works, it inevitably sweeps up the information of every cell phone in the area that's in the vicinity of the Stingray. So bystanders. Um, information is also being collected. So in the case in Tallahassee, they're looking for this one guy who's in a uh, parking lot. Every car that's in the parking lot, every mo hotel room, every person who's in a hotel room nearby, everyone who's in their home nearby, their, their information is also being sweeped up by the Stingray. So who's supervising all this? Are judges giving orders? In many cases, uh, the police are not seeking any court order in order to use the technology. In, in the case I was describing in Tallahassee, they did not. When they do request um, authority from a judge to use the technology, they're not really explaining to the judge what they're going to do. Right. So in Tallahassee alone, you said that they've done this 200 times uh, in recent years. Across the country, it's been used thousands of times. Recently, a couple of judges have figured out what the technology actually does. What have they said? What have they done? Well, they've uh, tried to require police on the stand to explain what it does, what it, how they're deciding when to do it, what are the authorities that they believe that they have in order to use it, um, and police are refusing to answer those questions. The FBI and the manufacturers of this technology would prefer that uh, the police do not reveal any information about this technology to a judge. And so prosecutors tell the judges, we have a non-disclosure agreement. What's the judge say? Uh, in response, the judge uh, says, well, you don't have a non-disclosure agreement with the court. Uh, you need to answer this question. They've held police in contempt of court for not answering the questions. Um, it's getting contentious in these. And, the, and what's actually happened is that prosecutors would rather drop the charge or withdraw the evidence than, than answer the questions, right? That's right. So this is either constitutional or not, and the government's doing its best to make sure we don't find out. They are. Thanks. Thank you.